this is my Martian project, okay? For an Ice Age farm, indoor farm. I'm not doing cattle in an indoor farm. <laughs> maybe a cow or two. It'll keep you warm, though, like it, the... Like the uh... It would. <laughs> what I would do is maybe the some maybe some dairy cows indoors, right? Um, so that you get the manure, because that cow manure is just too good. And then you get some milk and maybe a little <laughs> bit of meat when they get old. And then you're going to have to import from Earth some bull semen <laughs> to keep the population going. Um, but bog ponics. That's what I'm thinking. Bog ponics. Everyone wants to do aquaponics, uh, or uh, which is terrestrial vegetation grown on the fish stuff. No. Do aquaculture. Do aquaculture. Do bog plants. If you want to grow mushrooms, you want a lot of bulrushes, reeds, papyrus, things that grow a lot. These things, A, filter water more effectively than aquaponics does. And they produce... They'll, like, they'll take up... Um, in the nitrogen cycle, they'll take up waste product from the fish and turn it into, you know, at, at an earlier point than terrestrial plants will. Um, so you, you have this where you have your aqua, uh, aquatic plants. So you've got a lot of the stuff for materials. That's heavy filtration. You cut these bulrushes, reeds, papyrus, things like that down. You use that, you chip that, shred that, whatever, use it for mushroom growing substrate. Now you got your mushrooms coming in, right? Use mushroom blocks to then uh, the spent blocks, after the lignin has been reduced, you've got your oysters or your mushrooms off of it go into bio uh, fuel projects like methane production. Now you've got methane coming out, right? So now you've got that, and then you've got fertilizer and waste products coming out the backside. Listen to how yeah. excited he is. This is, the, this is <laughs> the thing that excites me the most. Um, and then you have um, your edible aquatics. So Kang Kong, which is Chinese water spinach, uh, water chestnuts. Uh, you have rice, which can be done in flooded bed situations. You can even do fog ponic rooms where you can do, I've seen, check out fog ponic potatoes where they literally grow plants on the, in the roof of this room. And then the roots just grow down and it's taller than you. You know, you can like, like, it's like this room would be filled with a crazy strange forest and fog, nutrient fog, uh, vaporized into the air and then potatoes literally just growing on the roots where you just go in and pick potatoes and you have a perennial potato crop, that kind of thing. Then you have, um, which by the way, like you can use your potatoes to make uh, dextrose for potato dextrose for your uh, agar plates, things like that. Samantha's right. You can do wapato, which is called duck potatoes. It's a North American plant. They make a, there's a Chinese version called arrowroot, I think, um, which is a big starchy thing, a big starchy tuber that grows in the water. Then you have um, water cress, which is a high vitamin C and great um, food for you. You have aquatic snails, which I mean, think mystery snails, um, apple snails, which are, uh, they eat in like nice. Thailand and stuff. Some people won't eat it. The people who want to eat it will get all those mi micronutrients and stuff that they, they want from, you know, I, I could eat snail about every day. I love shellfish. And you um, use the shells too. You could use the shells, grind it up for calcium or use them for other things. Um, the, and what's cool about this is Martian regolith is actually toxic to us, right? You don't want to just grow stuff straight into it. So what's cool is instead of having to grow a bunch, bring a bunch of soil with you or anything like that, you can literally dig down into the regolith and then lay your uh, pond liner down, like a plastic pond liner um, or non-plastic, uh, non whatever. Um, but you lay your liner down. Now you're protected from the Martian regolith that causes, um, what is it, goiters or whatever. Um, causes all sorts it's, of it's, things. Yeah, it's perchlorates that's in the soil. You need to clean it of perchlorates. But you basically go through, you dig it down, you put the liner in. Now you've got all of this grow space for aquatic vegetation, for bogs. Um, you can grow, you know, there's all kinds of flowers and nitrogen sources, duckweeds and <laughs> etc. So many uh, aquatic edible plants. You, uh, granted, your diet's going to look different if you do like this. But it'll be a healthy diet, and it'll be good food. Um, you'll have fish, um, and eventually you can do all kinds of diversity, right? Like you can do different ponds, different fish. You can have tilapia. You can have catfish. If you feed tilapia healthy amounts of green matter, um, then they actually produce omega-3 fatty acids pretty heavily instead of omega-6, which makes them healthier. You've got your mushrooms coming in. Now you're building a soil cycle where you're pulling carbon out of the air. You have a nitrogen cycle. You've got all of this stuff working together. What spits out the end from the mushrooms is, you know, the biofuel, but the spent substrate gets turned into organic matter for soil. 
then you can take your treated Martian regolith that's got the perchlorates removed, mix that in with organic matter, you know, much like the Martian had to do in the movie The Martian. He had to, he had to actually sit there and uh, mix it together, right, so he could grow potatoes. You can't just use plain organic matter by itself. Um, and then you just have this whole cycle going. Then you can add in rabbits and stuff as you have enough rushes and things for them to eat. I mean, of course, animals are difficult because they're competing for you for, with, with you for resources, but they give you certain resources. So Space chickens, rabbit. chickens are probably better than rabbits because chickens are omnivorous. You can grow insects. They can eat leftover fish material. They can eat mushrooms. They can eat gra grains. They turn it into high, uh, high quality fertilizers. They give you eggs, meat, chicken paws, etc. Feathers. Chicken paws. <laughs> yeah, that gets me excited. Okay, we probably like built up a ton of comments after that, but <laughs> just because I kept going. Though I will say, I've noticed that we are we are coming down in the audience. I think people are are letting me leave. <laughs> uh, a lot of people. It's, it's not what you're talking about. It's it's <laughs> forced flavored mushrooms. That bro's been doing a lot of thinking. Uh, dextrose for making alcohol that can be used for sanitization. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> Mac McCullis. A lot of people are going to work, or they're you know they're having to go off for yeah. dinner reasons. But Jacob, that's it. Hogponics. Or is the way you start. Once you start getting these, like, I, and then you've got the sewage dome because you can do water treatment through certain types of bogs, right? Now, this is my plan. I want the sewage dome on Mars. I want this big bog system, and then I want everyone to pipe their shit back to me. And I want them to pay me to take their shit, right? Because it's just going to build up otherwise. Then I'm going to take all that. I'm going to turn it into fertilizer gold. Then I'm going to grow vegetables on it. And then I'm going to sell it back to them. And I'm going to make money on their shit twice. <coughs> and I'm going to feed them stuff so they ship more. So they give me more. And then they pay me more. This is my cycle. You're incentivized at that point. <laughs> all right. That was hard breathing. Um, I'm a software engineer by trade. Quit my job a year ago. I've been working on spore hubs for mushroom farmers. Congratulations, man. Getting out of the day job. Ooh. That is such a leap and it's hard and it's scary. And I know you go through scary moments and stuff, but man, it's, I feel like I, I like, I can handle this fear of being out on your own more than I can handle the fear of being laid off. How much extra do you guys produce at each stage to avoid contaminant crop failure, HEPA filter lab crapped out? Uh, Jacob, I just try to create backups on backups. I mean, if I do, if I have an order for one, I'll make three. If I order for three, I'll make five. You know, that kind of thing. Joshua Marsh. Oh, wait, wait, we already said that. that well, we'll do mob. like three plates at the beginning of a, of a run, three plates at the end of the run. You know, it, we just, you know. It really depends on your skill level, too. And because um, when you start getting more and more uh, a higher and higher skill level and a recognition of contamination, <clears> you can start working with um, fewer backups. So good job recovering, guys. I saw a lot of people go uh, get so messed up for so long from COVID. Yeah, man, it's it it was rough. It was the it was the roughest thing I've ever is. Do you know it changes the viscosity of your like snot, spit, and blood? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what causes more clumping? Um, one of my problems was I didn't recognize how to breath I was getting um, until it was I was like getting dizzy and passing out and having to hold onto the wall. Um, so and that's because instead it doesn't actually. Well, what'd you show me, Samantha? It doesn't actually, it, instead of filling your lungs full of pus and fluid and mucus, it actually collapses your air sacs. So you don't receive yeah. enough oxygen, but you're getting rid of all the carbon dioxide just fine. And the carbon dioxide is the trigger that makes us, you know, like, oh, oh I need air. That's because you're building up carbon dioxide levels in your blood. Um, when you aren't getting enough oxygen, but your carbon dioxide levels are leaving just fine, mm -hmm. there's not a, then it's not a problem. <laughs> Yeah.